Okay, we're down to the last 10 minutes, and of course I didn't get to everything. Um, next week we're going to start to be doing some stuff that's going to require more complicated editing of files, and you're going to want to just echo into them like we've kind of been doing today. So Matt and I are each just going to spend five real fast minutes showing, I'll show you Emacs real quick, he'll show you Vim. You are not going to know Emacs or Vim in the five minutes that we're showing them to you. But it would not be a bad idea to spend some time between now and Thursday doing a half an hour tutorial on one of these. Don't feel like you have to learn both of them, although feel free to spend some time with both to get familiar. But you're going to want to have at least some minimum familiarity with an editor, uh, preferably Emacs or Vim. Um, between now and next Thursday, because that's when we're actually going to start dealing with some files that you're going to want to edit. Uh, Thursday, even just a little bit, it's mainly a week from today that you're going to want to know an editor, but start to become familiar. To really know Emacs or Vims will take a lot of your time, but spending an hour with a good tutorial for either will teach you everything you need to know for the purposes of this course. Um, so Emacs and Vim are both text editors. They're like, uh, I mean, there are a lot more than that. They, they're both very powerful text editors. You can do all kinds of things with them. Um, they are your Microsoft words of the command line, right? Only they're way better. Um, <laughs> and they don't suck. But uh, Emacs versus Vim, they're both pretty popular editors. Emacs is a little bit older. Uh, the, the main differences are Emacs is kind of bloated in terms of terminal editors. Emacs can do a ton of things. It's super powerful, but because of that, it takes up a lot of space on the system. Thus, if you log into your VCR, Emacs probably isn't installed on it, even if it's running Linux, because it just takes up too much space to be installed anywhere other than like a regular system. Some servers, too, if you're on a research, so most servers will have both, but if you're on like a resource limited server and its job really isn't to do text editing, it might not have Emacs. Vim, on the other hand, is much lighter weight, and pretty much every system in the world will have Vim installed on it. Um, Vim, however, as you all saw earlier, is what we call a moded editor, meaning it has different modes, and depending on what mode you're in, it changes what the keys do. So this can get very confusing, uh, and if you're into human-computer interaction or human factors engineering under this, there's a lot of research that says this is a really bad idea. But point being, Vim's a moded editor. In order to know what your keystroke's going to do, you have to have some mental model of what mode you're currently in. Um, so that's great if you have that model, and that sucks if you don't which is why you all saw that editing was not, uh, editing and exiting was not at all straightforward. Emacs on the other hand is not a moded editor. Emacs just has a whole bunch of hotkeys, so you're kind of always in a flat mode, no matter what, your hotkey's always gonna do the same thing. It's not like you have to think about what mode you're in to think about what that hotkey does. So, real quick on Emacs. To start Emacs, you type in the word Emacs. Now, on the VM, this should open in the terminal. Emacs actually has a GUI version that you can use the mouse in, has menus. Don't bother learning that version because the main place you're going to need to use something like Emacs, I mean, one, you'll get faster if you learn it on the command line, but two, often you're going to need to learn Emacs when you're remoted into a server somewhere, or you're going to need to use Emacs when you're remoted into a server, you're not going to have a mouse. So don't spend a lot of time learning the mouse version of Emacs, learn the command line version. Uh, for me, when I type in Emacs, it's going to launch the command line version. If you type in Emacs and it launches a window, I'm pretty sure I fixed this so it doesn't do this on the VM, but if you're on another system, you might get a window by default. If you're not on the VM, you might not even have Emacs installed by default, but go ahead and install it later if you don't. Uh, Emacs-NW will always ensure that you're running the command line version, even if you have both the command line version and the GUI version installed. Uh, so not to be too confusing in just starting it, but uh, if you run Emacs-NW, you always end up with this starting screen, which is uh, essentially just tells you something about Emacs and actually lets you read the manual if you want to. Uh, this starting screen isn't actually what we care about. What we're going to want to do right away is we want to create a new file and start editing it. Don't feel like you have to keep up. You can look up all these hotkeys later. But in Emacs, most of the commands uh, you type in by starting by hitting Control X. Uh, and if you'll notice, when I hit Control X, this little CX showed up down here that tells me that I started to enter a command. So most of the commands are composed of two keys. Control X is the start of the command, and then control some other key to actually do something. So if I do Control X, Control F, it's going to bring up this find file option. Uh, now I want to create a new file, so I'm just going to say, let's just call it new file, uh, and I'm going to hit enter. And we'll see, if I typed in the name of a file that already existed, it would have opened up that file. But because I typed in a file and a file that didn't exist, it's saying new file. 
Now it's going to start behaving like a regular editor. Like I can just start typing. This is a test. I can hit enter. So on and so forth. I can go down here and write some code, write, I mean, whatever you want to do. Obviously, this code doesn't do anything because I'm not actually running the program. But uh, I can fill up this file. When I'm ready to save this file, if I do Control X and then S, it's going to say, are you sure you want to save this file? Yes, no, so on and so forth. So I'm going to type in a Y, and now it saved the file. If I want to exit Emacs, I do Control X, Control C, and it closes Emacs. Now we can look at that file I just created, and you'll see it has all the content that I had a minute ago. Um, if I want to reopen that file and just start editing it, I can also just type Emacs and then the file name, in which case it'll just automatically open that file and take me right to that screen. I can do the same thing with a new file. I could do Emacs new file too, and it'll just take me to a blank editor. So there are good one page Emacs cheat sheets online. I recommend looking them up. Um, there, so I've shown you like nothing that Emacs can do, right? You can open it and edit files. That's really the bare minimum. Uh, all of these editors have ways to like copy text, paste text, paste text multiple times. Emacs will actually let you compile from within Emacs and then like give you a pointer on every line that has an error if you're programming with it. Um, they will do syntax highlighting. So if I open up something like So if I open up like a LaTeX file, it's going to go ahead and syntax highlight. I mean, I'll use this because maybe some people in here know have seen LaTeX before at least. But LaTeX is a markup language for writing technical documents. Um, so you'll see that Emacs is automatically highlighting parts of this that it recognizes. Uh, it'll do spell check. Um, I mean, all of this stuff's built into Emacs. There's clever ways to do all of this. So really, that's the bare minimum. Emacs exists. You exit Emacs by doing Control X, Control C. It's way easier than Vim. Uh, and I will save the one file. Spend some time playing around with it. Definitely by this time next week, maybe by Thursday. There's good if you just Google Emacs tutorial. There are plenty of them out there. Find a shorter rather than longer one. But um, it's one of the two big editors. I'll let Max do them. I assume you want to do it on your machine, yeah? Sure. You're welcome to do it on my machine. That's fine. Well, you're done. I got so, my, I got my machine. Okay. All right, so Vim is pretty scary, <laughs> but it is everywhere. Um, and don't let us scare you away. Tons of people use and love Vim and tell me I'm a heathen using Emacs. I know. So yeah. they're both valid choices. Uh, choose Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> I wound up learning Vim really well because I just I was working on a server for like a year or two, and I, that was the only thing we had. So that's how I really forced myself to learn it. But you should at least know some of the basics just because at some point in time, you're going to wind up in a, a system where you need to, need to know them. Um, so I'll start on a file that exists, or I guess I shouldn't start on a file that exists. Um, so if we just you know, start, if you give it a, a, an argument when you start, so that was a you know, new file, um, it'll open up for that file um, with nothing in there. Um, so by default, you're in the default mode, I believe. Um, to enter commands, they all start with colon. So shift colon. And you'll see the colon at the bottom. Um, and then to quit, it, the command is Q. So now you're out of them. To write the file, you can use W. We'll write the file if it doesn't exist. Um, also, X, I do a lot. X is right and quick. So it's just a kind of a convenience. I guess it's it's short for basically WQ, which is another command right and quick. Um, uh, let's see. What's so do what I always do. What's I open up Emacs and I try to start typing in my file, because that's what you'd expect yeah. to be able to do in a text editor. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> when you're in the default mode or command mode, you can't actually type. You can move around <laughs> the file, um, but you can't type. If you want to type, you have to enter insert mode. And to do that, you just hit I. 
and it should say insert. Does it say insert at the bottom? That's easy. Yeah. So now you're in insert mode. Yeah, until you forget it. Now you get your first sentence, and now you're in some God knows what mode because you just issued 40 <laughs> commands that for whatever your well, you, you know, usually it'll say at the bottom what mode you're in. Um, <laughs> you, you can configure that. Um, but what so, if I want to scroll when I'm in insert mode? What? So what, can I move my cursor in insert mode? Yeah, so, in, so okay, here's, here's the real reason why you need to know a lot about VI. There's an old version, which is just VI without the M. And in insert mode, you can't move around with arrow keys. And it'll start putting out things like caret A and caret C. And like, what the heck is going on? So you have to hit escape to get out of insert mode. And then you should be able to move around with arrow keys. OK? Um, but with the, your um, configuration file for BIM, that by, what's going to come by default on most systems today, you can move around just fine. Is there a question? That might not be true on the VM. Yeah. No, can you move around? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, escape gets you back to um, default. default mode, which is where you hit colon and then you enter your commands. So, you can write, for example. Um, so, write means save. Yeah, save, right. Um, <coughs> what else would you want to do with them? You can search. For, for things uh, without getting into regular expressions, say I can search for uh, ASDF with a slash, um, and that'll take me. If you hit N, then it'll take you to every occurrence of the word. So if you're looking through a big LaTeX document and you're looking through for something in particular, um, you can search. Um, you can um, delete lines. To delete a single line, it's DD when you're in command mode. We'll remove the line. Um, you can paste. It's paid. Wh whatever you last deleted is by default what you're going to paste. Um, if you want to copy a line without actually deleting it, it's YY. It stands for yank. And then you can you know, make copies. Um, let's see. There's so a lot to this. Good question. Um, you didn't have to enter colon for any of those <laughs> commands, YY. No, because they're just they're key bindings that are, they're, I guess they're not technical commands, they're actions. We'll, we'll so is it like on the second Y that you get, it actually does the pasting? Like yeah, so basically, else so that? things like D and Y and I think uh, okay. C, um, those are the initial command, the initial key binding. And then after that, you do some kind of motion. So you can say like Y, 5, and then down and it'll copy the five lines there and below, and then you can paste those lines. Um, so, okay. And there's magic up the wazoo, you can do it both. So I, here's, here's a good one. Help is a command. Um, help will take you to the help text in, in VI, and then you can just you know search around help for what you want. You can say help uh, you know, D, for example, and it'll take you to how to delete. Um, so there's an extensive help built in um, I think that's good for basics. But the, the big thing is I goes into insert mode, escape goes out of insert mode, control Q, uh, uh, Q is quit. And if you wind up in this weird record mode, because I think the Q as a key without the command is record, so you wind up in a whole lot. Um, I, I just hit the keyboard like a monkey and eventually I'll get out. <laughs> <laughs> just like if, if you wind up in, in record mode, just keep doing control Q and eventually you'll leave. I think technically to get out of it, it's like capital Q or something. But it, it, it can be, it is a little difficult being in record mode sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Q starts and stops recording. There's probably, a, you can probably um, uh, turn that off with a configuration file so it doesn't hire back. So, but I'm used to just. When I send out the uh, video links, I'll send some links to good tutorials for both BIM and Emacs. But the name of the game is pick one and learn it, because it'll become your best friend. Uh, they're both very powerful. They're both great for doing a wide variety of things, from coding just to writing text documents. They both have lots of, they're both very, very powerful. Um, once you really learn them, like I don't do anything in Microsoft Word anymore, right? Because why would I? I'm a lot faster than Linux. So, 
learn editor, you'll need to know one. Those are the two big ones. There are a handful of other editors, but nobody uses them. So I was just going to say, if you guys installed the full version of them, there's a bit too dirty to call right yeah, I think that probably is installed on at least the. Uh, it should be installed on at least the VM. Yeah, so that'll take you through it. Um, but the, the only problem with Vim Tutor is, it, I think it encourages you to use H, J, K, and L instead of the arrows. That's technically more efficient because you keep your hands in the center of the keyboard, but you're probably just going to want to use the arrows. Um, really? Yeah. Okay, Vim so was designed by very smart people whose sole goal was to move as quickly as possible through a text document based upon the way their brains work. It does not necessarily make it a good tool for someone else to learn. But um, they're both very powerful editors. I mean, it's like a pretty stolid split when you ask me what they question. use. Just another question. Can you use page up, page down if you have like a humongous file and you don't want to arrow through? Yeah, that'll go a page at a time. Also, um, Same let's see, capital G goes to the bottom of the file. Lowercase gg goes to the top of the file. Um, yeah. And your home and in buttons do what you'd expect. They take you to the start or the end of the line. I mean, all of those buttons on your keyboard that you never actually used before actually matter when you start to drill it. Kind of like a mouse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, every number is basically a command which takes you to that line that exists. So also, we didn't get to any of the a lot of the um, diagnostic commands, but you should, I think, Send out an email or yeah, so we have a whole bunch of them with things like listing ports that are open, processes that are running, um, devices that you have on your computer. So if you're trying to get help from someone and are online and they want to know what video card, you're going to need the command LSPCI to, to list all your PCI devices. So there's a whole bunch of these uh, kind of diagnostic commands. Which you should so that Google names. Docs link I sent out with the videos points to a live page that will continually update. So just go there. Uh, there are commands we didn't get to, but yeah, the man pages, some of them you don't need. A lot of them we're going to come back and see later on anyway. So don't freak out if we didn't talk about every command that's on that. If you want to know more about it, look up the man page. Otherwise, assume we'll come back to it later. Any last questions? Yeah, how do you get out of here? Yeah, like I'm trying to pull and queue, pull and queue is not working. Uh, where, where is All right, now we'll take a look. Um, so we're here, same time, same place. So uh, Vim doesn't want you to exit unless you saved your work, but if you want to discard it, it's colon Q with an exclamation point. The exclamation point means discard. <laughs> and I can so it's colon Q? There you go. Yeah, it's colon Q, it's not colon Q. And yeah. so I can use this video of people not understanding Vim to like make hilarious YouTube. <laughs> <use this video. laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you on Tuesday. I'll send out these videos in the next day or so. Uh, we'll stick around for a bit if people have other questions.